I'm going to let everybody have a little chance to get on here. If y'all would just kind of let me know how, how the video is doing. I'm trying to make it to where we get the best quality here and it ain't flashing in and out and everybody hear me real good. So just somebody kind of let me know something on there. <clears throat> Morning, everybody. Okay, we'll just give it a couple more minutes. It took me, it took me a little bit trying to try and get everything set up this morning and everything. And I ain't, I've been working on a study and trying to get everything in there to, to do these uh, videos, but uh, it ain't got it done yet. A lot, like a lot of things, just put it off and. Uh, take care of other stuff but uh it's good to have everybody with us this morning and uh, uh we thank you for tuning in if you got a chance uh, uh please try to share this out there and we'll try to get the word of god out to as many as we can and uh that's the purpose of this ministry and uh, now it's taking a little more hold uh, uh, for us right now still got a lot of sick in the church and uh, uh right now so we want to we want to send our prayers out with them today and um you know and y'all just remember each other uh, we uh, we grow strong in the lord uh, at all times and um, we'll try to help by doing that by sharing a little portion of God's word today and uh, you know I I do miss some singing a little bit and I was thinking about that this morning and I need to shame on me for not doing this but I I need to break my guitar out a little bit and try to sing some songs and stuff like that and if you got some um, <laughs> video yourself and send it to me I uh, will get it put on here if you if you want to do that I know some people are camera shy I know I'm one of them uh, you know everything's been so different trying to get in front of these cameras and 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 do things like that. We're not used to that at all. But uh, you know, uh, there's one thing that I could uh, that I could think of worse than that is that uh, God's word not go out uh, the way that it was intended on being. So uh, uh, that's why we do this. Is it not any FaceTime or anything like that uh, that we want? Because I'd be the last one to do that. But uh, uh, we are thankful this morning, though, we, we can join you uh, uh, by this way and uh, maybe bring forth a, a portion of God's word. And uh, we ask you to be much in prayer for us this morning that we do nothing of ourselves and only what the Lord would have us do. And uh, you know, once again, uh, uh, we make mention of all our, our, our counties and uh, right now surrounding counties, Benton County, uh, all of them right now, they're just kind of going through a, a little bit of a hard time. And so we want to remember each and every one of them, all our churches. Uh, you know, what we've spoken to, to a few people this morning and everything and uh, talked with Brother Billy earlier. And uh, uh, you know, it's, it's the same way everywhere. It just is a little bit of sickness everywhere. So uh, uh, we want to remember them. So, uh, uh, well, uh, I'm going to go to the Lord in prayer here in a little bit. We got uh, uh, we got quite a few people on here right now. So uh, uh, that looks good. So uh, uh, y'all just uh, go to prayer in prayer with me and then we'll get into God's word. Dear Lord, we'd like to thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you've given us. We thank you for yet another opportunity to gather in your name this morning, dear Lord. And we just pray uh, uh, that you just have your way with this, dear Lord. And we just uh as we begin to, uh, to do our very best to uh, try to bring out the word, we know that it will not be done unless you uh, uh, begin to come by and allow it to be preached, dear Lord. We just pray this morning that your spirit go out and uh, uh, just uh, inspire it the way that it needs to be in our lives, dear Lord, that we can apply it and uh, uh, go out and better serve you in this world that's lost and dying every day, dear Lord. And uh, we pray that maybe some soul may be saved uh, uh, for it's everlastingly too late. We pray this morning, dear Lord, uh, uh, for those that are sick, uh, uh, maybe have an ailment of the body, we pray uh, uh, maybe a special healing upon them, dear Lord, that you just reach down your hand and uh, uh, do it as only you can. And uh, we pray this morning that maybe they'll get that uh, uh, that healing touch, but most of all, that peace and comfort uh, uh, that passes all understanding. We pray this morning, dear Lord, uh, uh, for maybe those that are in the condition, uh, uh, maybe they were once on fire for you, and uh, uh, maybe they, they they had it within their heart, and uh, uh, maybe just straight away for a little while. We pray this morning, maybe uh, uh, this be the time that they come back to you, and uh, uh, we know that you're long-suffering God, and uh, uh, that you're able to, uh, to be standing there with open arms, and uh, if we would just turn and repent and turn from our ways, uh, uh, we know that you're there this morning. We pray that maybe that'll happen, and uh, in someone's life, maybe we can all grow a little bit closer to you this morning, uh, uh, that's our heart's desire. We pray this morning, uh, uh, most of all, maybe that those that are lost and undone and out in the world and uh, don't know you this morning, uh, we pray uh, maybe by hearing the way of the word, dear Lord, the way that it goes out, the way it, we know that it rightly divides, it uh, it cuts right down to the core. We pray this morning that maybe it pricks somebody's heart and uh, uh, they come to know you for us everlastingly too late. Uh, uh, we thank you for everything you've done for us, dear Lord, and uh, all the provisions of life you've given us. And uh, uh, we thank you once again for this opportunity to come back together. Uh, we ask you to forgive us for we failed to come short so many times. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, this morning, uh, like I said, we got a little bit of thought on our heart and our mind, and uh, we're going to try to do our best to get it across to you. Uh, uh, kind of a simple thought, maybe not a whole lot of scripture, uh, uh, but you know, uh, the Lord laid it upon our heart uh, uh, over this past week. I've uh, seen things that uh, 
uh, that may be going on right now. And uh, you know, last week uh, we got we got uh, uh, to talking about some things and about uh, how deception is going on right now. And uh, uh, you know, and, and, and I, I, I called it out last week because I believe that uh, a lot of those deceivers know exactly what they're doing. And uh, uh, you know what? And they try to give it cute titles and things like that. And uh, I try to make it seem like it's okay. And uh, uh, you know what? And then they get a lot of following like that. And uh, uh, you know what? The Word of God tells us about those that would come along and be able to do that. And uh, uh, that many would go thereafter. And uh, uh, you know what? The, the Lord himself told us... Uh, uh, that there's a path, there's uh, two pathways. Uh, uh, there's a, there's one that is broad, and uh, many will go down, and uh, uh, you know, and there's a one that's narrow that uh, uh, very few will go. And this morning, I I want to just uh, just uh, ask you to take into the Word of God and uh, uh, know that, that narrow path, that one that's laid out, is straightforward, and uh, uh, this is one that we need to be going down. So we got some prayer requests. Uh, uh, maybe coming in right now, so let's remember each and every one of them. Uh, uh, this morning, we uh, uh, we wanted to make mention to, uh, we had a couple of them last week. Uh, we want to remember Sister Nancy, and uh, uh, we also want to remember Brother Ron and uh, all, all that's going on. Uh, we ask you this morning to remember my brother. I got a call from my mother the other night, and, and he's been uh, uh, going to the doctor over some health issues and everything. Uh, so if you would, uh, remember him. Also, uh, uh, last night, uh, we, we heard of a gentleman that, that, that uh, has been on a liver transplant list for quite a while, and... Uh, uh, you know, and, uh, and we were we were uh, looking at the auction and everything. That's where it was at. And then uh, he thought enough to ask everybody to pray for him. So uh, uh, he's become one number one on the list. We're going to get that transplant, uh, uh, Lord willing, here before long. So let's remember him. Don't know his name. Uh, uh, the Lord does. So let's remember all those prayer requests. So uh, uh, we're going to get in the Word this morning and uh, not going to try to uh, keep you too long. And, uh, you know, I know that our attention spans, especially on the internet, a lot of times is uh, uh, quite short, but uh, uh, we do thank each and every one of you for being here. But uh, uh, like I said, we were talking about deception last week and, uh, uh, you know, and how the, de the deceivers are out there. We know uh, uh, we can we can about call them by name. Uh, if you're looking this morning and if you're watching according to the Word of God, I, I believe that it, the, the, the Spirit will reveal it to you. But, uh, uh, you know, this morning as I was uh, uh, beginning to uh, think about what the Lord's laid on our heart this week and, uh, you know, uh, I believe that today that uh, uh, the Lord, whenever he saved my soul uh, as a young boy, uh, uh, you know what, I knew that I was lost and out in sin. I knew that I wasn't where I needed to be. And uh, you know what, I knew the clear path to get there because uh, he is the only way, the only door. And uh, uh, the word of God laid that out for me, pricked me within my heart, let me know that I was lost. And uh, I believe this morning that's the way that you're saved. Is, uh, uh, first, you got to know you're lost. And uh, that conviction of the Holy Spirit comes by and begins to bring a man down uh, to the point to where he can be saved. And uh, uh, you know what, whenever I I was saved that night, though. I was instilled within me uh, uh, something, uh, the most precious thing, and we talk about it all the time, uh, uh, but I, that, by that salvation that came, uh, you know what, I, I remember referring to it a lot of times, and I talk to my children uh, a lot of times about this, by accepting Jesus into my heart, and uh, you know what, I believe he's in my heart. I believe he dwells within me. Uh, you know what, his Holy Spirit uh, uh, is there, and uh, you know what, it allows me to go uh, throughout life, and, uh, and you know what, be pleasing unto God in the things that I do. Uh, as long as I do things of the Spirit, I can be pleased in that way and uh uh, you know, this morning I was uh, sitting here thinking about what the Word of God holds for us and uh, and what it what it speaks against, what it stands for, and uh, uh, you know, and things like that. And, uh, and you know, there's a scripture that has always been in my mind, my heart, and I know you've heard it too. And uh, a very simple scripture, very short scripture. And uh, uh, you know, what there was something I'll share with you here in a little bit uh, uh, that a man said many years ago that has stuck with me and a lot of my fellow brethren. Uh, you know, what we heard that night at revival and uh, another simple statement, but yet the Lord chose to use that to work within us and. Uh, you know, I think the Word of God, if you'll go to it uh, uh, you, you, and look and really search it out for what it says, it, it'll put you in line. It, it'll make a new perspective for you there in your life. And uh, uh, you know what, if you choose, if you truly choose to live by it, you know, I, when it, like I said, when I was saved as a young child, something was put within me uh, uh, that I live according to the manner that God had intended on uh, from the very beginning. Uh, he had a, a pre a ordained plan, uh, uh, very well executed, uh, always has been. Uh, you know what, uh, salvation came down in the form of his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who died on that cross, that you and I would have opportunity. And, uh, uh, you know, as I was uh, thinking about that right there, when God creates opportunity, I know uh, uh, that he intends on the the, uh, the, the opportunity to be taken, uh, uh, to be used, uh, uh, to come to be uh, to be manifest. And, uh, and you know, and, and whenever it happens, that in the end, there's a perfect outcome. 
And you know, when as I was uh, thinking about this perfect outcome that he expects, and uh, you know what I believe he expects it from each and every one of his born again children. And I, you know what, if you claim to be of the church today, if uh, if you say that you are a Christian, uh, uh, you're a born again child of God, you've accepted uh, Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Uh, uh, you know what, that's the only way that you can be that. And uh, uh, you know what, I know that a lot of times we like to uh, to uh, uh, make things a lot more simpler. We think, and uh, uh, you know what, come up with different ways to do this. But there's only but one way that a man does that is when he gets uh, convicted by the Holy Spirit and gets down to the point where he calls out uh, and asks the Lord to be Lord and Savior of his life. He comes with a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And uh, uh, So you know today, uh, as I was, uh, like I said, once again thinking about this and what the Lord would have me do, and I, you know what, I've, I've made this statement many a times and I believe with all my heart and I think that it's made me a better minister like that. I'm not saying that I'm any good or anything. I, I know a lot that I would rather hear than myself. And uh, uh, But you know what, I'm going to tell you, uh, uh, one thing that has stuck with me and uh, uh, you know it kept me moving forward and let me know is that uh, uh, each and every time that, a, that, a, that a, a, a thought or a message is given to me that I, it is preached to me first uh, before I preach it to anybody else and uh, uh, you know what if you can't preach to yourself uh, you have no business preaching now, if you can't live a life that be according to the scriptures uh, I don't believe you have any business uh, uh, going out and beginning to uh, uh, tell anybody else about it so uh, you know what because you know I, I think that once again I made this statement last week actions speak louder than words uh, you know, we're not, not discouraging anybody from going to do this. What I am trying to do is encourage you uh, uh, to get yourself right, to make sure that you're in tune with God, to make sure that all things uh, uh, that could separate you, that could, uh, that could put you in a condition to where the Holy Spirit is not having any part with you, uh, uh, because you, know, you and I know, by, according to what the Word of God says, is that there is nothing that we can do save that we do it in the, Holy, in the name of the, of the only begotten Son and through that Holy Spirit uh, uh, that indwells within us today. Uh, so you know what, uh, if I know that there's going to be any powerful movement today, I know it's going to be done whenever a church gets right with God. Make sure that we're in tune and we're doing everything in accordance to the leadership and guidance and direction of the Holy Spirit uh, coming by and doing these things. So uh, uh, this morning, uh, uh, the thought that's been on our heart and our mind is, is that we have no excuses. Uh, we've talked about excuses before, and uh, uh, you know what? We, we that funny saying that we've heard all our life is, uh, uh, you know, uh, and it goes along with opinion too. Is excuses like a belly button? Everybody's got one. It, it seems like that today. You know what? Christian people make up excuses. You know what? And uh, the first thing when we don't accomplish something, the, the first thing we want to do is make an excuse of why we didn't do it. But you know, uh, I was thinking this morning about, about a thought uh, that was given a long time ago, and I told you about this earlier, about my Uncle Larry Hollinsworth. Uh, you know, he stood up at a revival over at Galilee one, one year, and I don't remember what year it was, it don't matter, but uh, you know what, it stuck with me, because I was sitting right there, and uh, he stood up, and he talked about this scripture right here, and I'm going to read it to you, over in Romans, the third chapter, 23rd verse. You know what, I believe that it ha every man has to realize what this verse says uh, in order to be saved. I, you know what, it may not have been the verse that you heard, but I, I believe that uh, you know, we, we serve a God that does not change. That means cover to cover uh, from the front of the book to the back of the book. He did not change in any way uh, the Holy Spirit that was inspiring all these men to write these scriptures. That it was still the same God that was speaking. Uh, so you know what, whenever this verse right here reads, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know, very simple scripture right there, like we said. Heard it many a times. Heard it preached about it many different ways. Uh, but there's, a, there's a, a form that was presented to us that night by Uncle Larry that he began to stand up and say, well, every man uh, uh, needs to realize that we've all sinned. We failed to come short of the glory of God. But not to use it as an excuse uh, uh, to go out and sin anymore, but to use it as an excuse to get down on the altar. And, I, you know, as I began to think about that, what he said that night, and uh, you know what, if a man of God would begin to realize that, Know where it came from. I believe you've got to go back to the very foundation of where it all started at. If we could all get down to that point to where we realized that uh, that night when we met the Lord on the altar, uh, uh, wherever it was, it may not have been on a bench in a church. Uh, you know what, for me, it was a little bit of a recliner in my bedroom that night. And uh, you know what, right before bedtime. And uh, you know, I was thinking uh, I had to come to the realization that uh, I was a sinner. You know what, I had failed and come short. There were things that I had done that had transgressed against what God had, had, had willed it to be done. And you know what? I believe that God loved us enough. He loved us so much. Uh, uh, he sent his law and instilled it into the world from the very foundation of the earth and uh, all of his creation and uh, uh, passed it along through everything that was made. And, uh, and you know, and as I'm thinking about this right here, that law, that very law is what convicts us. It lets us know uh, uh, that we've all sinned to come short of the glory of God. 
that we, uh, that we have the inability of ourselves uh, uh, to produce salvation that would keep us away uh, uh, from the wrath that God has against sin. So, you know, as I'm thinking this morning and uh, uh, looking around and the times we're living in right now and, uh, and uh, we see what the scripture says and talking about excuses, uh, how many times do we make excuses uh, for the sin in our life? How many times do we make excuses for the sin that's going on within our own churches? You know, I'm telling you this morning, I'm not here to break down any church or anything like that. That's not what we want to build up. We want to bring it into uh, to maybe a perspective today that we can all understand and better ourselves in the Lord. And uh, that's the only way anything's going to get any better. That's the only way that anything's going to be uh, accomplished the way that uh, what needs to be done and that the Lord can be pleased with us in doing so. It's not going to be by the name of our church or the denomination that we belong to or anything like that. It'll be according if we've lived according to what the Word of God says. Uh, if we've lived according to following after the leadership of the Holy Spirit and uh, allowed that to take part in our life and, uh, and stop making excuses uh, uh, when we fail and come short because you know what? The Scripture tells us straightforward that we will fail. We have failed. And you know, and I, I'm going to tell you, I, I'm not making an excuse for anybody when I use this scripture this morning because of the, the fact is, is that uh, we all realize once we've been saved and uh, uh, you know what, you've reached that age of accountability whenever conviction fell upon you, we have already realized that we were sinners, that, we have, uh, that we've, we've fallen into the category of failure. And at that point, I believe that when a conviction falls upon you, why the conviction is there is because there's no longer an excuse for why it was done. There's no longer an excuse for, uh, the, the, for, for the reason that the, the, the action took place in your life. And you know what? So I'm thinking about a born-again child of God today. And uh, uh, you know what? When we know what salvation is, when we've tasted of the goodness and the graces of God, uh, you know what? How do we have an excuse to get back out and dabble in the things of the world? How do we have an excuse this morning uh, for sin to be in our life? We don't. You know what? The Scripture is very straightforward on that as well. And uh, you know what? Uh, one of the Scripture a little further up uh, uh, from this in the second chapter, it talks about how a man is inexcusable. Uh, because you know that we know that this time there was people that were that were uh, uh, proclaiming the, uh, these things to be wrong in other people's lives, yet they were guilty of the very same thing. So you know, that's where we find ourselves a lot of times today. And uh, uh, we need to remind ourselves of why we need to live a daily repented life. The, the Bible speaks about living a repented life. It doesn't speak about a one and done thing here. You know, just because you, you met him at an altar somewhere, and thank God for that if you have, if salvation's a part of your life. But you know what? Uh, that right there shows and proves to you today because of what happened that night. You know, if, if forgiveness is asked for, and I believe that a man has to ask uh, for forgiveness for the sins that he's done in his life, he's got to have that forgiveness. The forgiveness comes uh, through Jesus Christ. And uh, uh, God can only stand there. Uh, he is a righteous God and uh, uh, be able to accept a man uh, if that blood is applied. That's the only thing that's going to keep you and I out of that uh, uh, wrath one day after a while, that blood being applied there. So you know what, whenever forgiveness is asked for, you know, if you go up to a friend that you've done wrong and you begin to, to apologize for something that's been done and uh, ask for the forgiveness, there's only one reason uh, why you want that forgiveness. You want to be instilled. You want, you want to come back. there. Well, you want reconciliation to happen. And whenever that happens right there, uh, uh, we ought not take it for granted. So gratitude is what we're supposed to have in return for the forgiveness that we've been received. You know what? I know that the Lord forgive me of my sins that night. And uh, uh, you know what? And time and time again, whenever I fail and come short, uh, and, I, and I believe it does happen. I'm not making any excuse for why it happens. But I believe it does happen. That's why we really live a repented life. It's because I'm genuinely sorry that I've transgressed because I want the divine favor of God. I, I want to be in the center of His will. I, I want to live in the midst of His presence. And uh, uh, you know what? So I, I, and whenever I get that, though, I, I have a feeling of gratitude because He did something for me that no other man could do. You know what? Uh, I, my, my love for the Lord uh, yeah, cannot be conditional. I'm not saying that this morning. That's not what I'm proclaiming here. Uh, you know what? Uh, I, I don't believe God's love is conditional to us. I believe He loves uh, uh, the sinners and the saints, if you would, to go by that term. But uh, uh, in, in all uh, reality right here, what we realize is that we were all sinners. Uh, that at some point in time, uh, a man's going to come to the realization, I believe, uh, if he reaches that age of accountability right there, uh, uh, to where he realizes he's a sinner. So, you know, we're all stuck in this category now. So, uh, uh, you know what? God's love uh, is not conditional on that part. 
God still, I, I believe that, uh, you know what, uh, I, I've heard this statement, I know you have too, uh, God wouldn't, uh, uh, loving God wouldn't send man to hell, and I believe that with all my heart, I, I believe that God's not going to send any man to hell, and you've heard this time and time again, I, I believe it'd be by that actions of that man, uh, uh, that he goes to hell, it'd be by his unrepentant sin, and uh, uh, the word of God tells us that, uh, uh, but you know what, he's such a loving God, uh, and I believe he loves that sinner, that sinner that, uh, that would choose to go in that way, that would uh, uh, follow down that broad path in the ways of the deception that we talked about last week. And uh, I believe he still loves them, but he's still a righteous God. And he has to be. He has to be a God that will stand by his word, that stands by everything he said. He's so loving uh, that he gave that law. He set it in order, set a standard that he could give something by, that you and I would have something to look to in a world full of revolving things that are caused by the sin of man. Uh, you know, what? why do things get worse? It does not get worse because God made it worse. It gets worse because of the complication that comes from the sin of man. So you know what? God is loving enough to where he stays that constant. He, he stays right there to where a man can come back to it and know, hey, that's the way of truth right there. there that is what I can hold on to. Uh, uh, that is what gives me that peace, that comfort that I need in this time and trouble of my life. If that had not been there, uh, and then salvation would not have been possible for me, and I know it wouldn't have been for you either. You know what? So I'm sitting here thinking about this right here, about how many times we try to make an excuse for our sin. You know what? When we know that God is placed within his word and let us know that it is there. It has happened. It will happen. And you know what? And you and I, the only thing that we can do today, and I, and I encourage you to read these other scriptures. I'm not going to go in, into them too much right here around this scripture, but uh, uh, this whole chapter right here, uh, read it for yourself. Uh, we need to be studying the word of God and know what it says. Uh, you know, we've got to take the whole thing for what it is and uh, not try to twist and turn it around. That's the first excuse we need to stop making. I, uh, pertaining to the Word of God. You know what? I'm a, I am I believe in the King James Version Word of God. And uh, uh, you can say, well, hey, well, I'm not, I'll tell you what this preacher right here, here he goes on that King James. Well, hey, I'm going to tell you. Uh, you know what? I believe that God meant it one way and one way only. It'll be taken. And uh, you and I need to do it by the inspiration and, uh, and, the, and the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And uh, if you search things out in that spirit, I believe it'll be spiritually uh, uh, revealed to you. If you do not, it, uh, then you'll never understand it. That's how it is. But you know what? It's not by the wording that's in this word right here. We make up so many excuses. Well, I can't understand this. Well, you know what? A lot of times, what, why we don't understand? Why we don't know what God's will, God's purpose is in our life and what, what he's got going on is because we don't get serious enough. We make too many excuses for ourselves to get back out there and do the things we want to do and only give God the time whenever it sees fit for us. You know what, right now, I think that, that uh, uh, this uh, this uh, whole pandemic we went through a lot of times, uh, it's given us a lot of time to sit and think and do things. And uh, uh, you know what, it's been good for us some. And uh, uh, some, I think, it's uh, turned us right around into, into a, a different scenario because I've seen a lot of people make a lot of promises. I, I've seen a lot of people uh, uh, stand up and say things publicly. You know what, I, uh, there was a scripture that was used here a little while back when we was in service. Uh, uh, you know what, it, when it talked about whenever a man's mouth says something to the market, not word for word, but that's what it meant. And uh, you know what, uh, I, I'm going to tell you, you, once you say something out loud, you say it publicly you uh, amongst the brethren, uh, uh, you know what, you need to hold true to it. Not only that, not only because uh, uh, that is the brethren right there, but uh, you know what, I believe that uh, uh, God takes it for something. And you know what, when the word of God was laid out and uh, uh, these men wrote it down and now you and I have read this and, uh, and we've heard it and uh, you know what, it's by this way, by faith in it, that we uh, have come to the realization of salvation and uh uh, you know, it is a public uh, a note to us today that we take in and we receive for what it is. Uh, and you know what? And whenever God is sending it out, uh, uh, he intends to hold it true. He intends to do everything that is placed in it. You know what? He's not going to hold back on that. Uh, there, there's, there's no excuses made by God uh, uh, for why things don't get done because uh, that simply does not happen with the Word of God. Whenever the Word of God speaks of it, uh, it, begins, it comes to be. Every little uh, prophecy that was made uh, was fulfilled. Uh, it was taken all the way to the T. Jesus made sure to let everybody know it when he was on that cross. He said, it is finished. Uh, I believe that was the accomplishment of those things. Uh, uh, we read in the word of God about how a man is supposed to live. And if he does not live that way, uh, uh, then it is end. Uh, uh, you know what is destruction? You know what? Now we know we go back to the back of the book. There's prophecy in there uh, yet to be fulfilled, but no doubt it's going to be. It's going to happen. Things I dare say would have probably already happened. But at this time right now, we realize all these things and what kind of God we serve and how he is for us today and how he is that constant. He does not change. Then we've got to realize that how we live our life uh, is going to come down to a point, uh, to, uh, to uh, I guess, uh, if you would say a boiling point, 
I believe he's talking about over in Hebrews, uh, 9 chapter 27 verse, lets us know about that appointed time that's coming. Death is going to surely come knocking at our door uh, uh, one way or other. We got that appointment made, but there's also an appointment for judgment. And judgment is going to be according uh, uh, to the things that we have said and we have done in this body. Uh, if we have lived that life of the Lord, if we have that blood applied, that right there is what's going to be required that day. And you know what? A man's got to, got to give a confession. A true confession is going to be weighed out that day. Uh, you know what? You and I ain't going to have no time to, uh, to deceive anybody. Can't deceive God. Uh, uh, you know what? Uh, he made the statement right here for all have failed, uh, see, have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Failure is in that scripture right there. Uh, uh, you know what? But failure uh, is only left there whenever a man does not choose to change his way. I believe you and I have the ability this morning. That scripture right there is given. Uh, just like Uncle Larry said that night. He said, and whenever he made the, the, the statement, uh, not to use it as an excuse to go out and keep on sinning, but to use it as an excuse to get on the offer. There is a pivotal point that a man can come to to make the decision. You and I have the ability to make the decision right now to change uh, what, what we have, how we will walk forward from this point on. You and I have the ability. Now, it is not based upon anybody in our family. It's not based upon any of our friends, uh, uh, what the social media or, or any kind of other media platform is saying, uh, uh, whoever the leader of the government is or anything like that. It, it, that does not matter. We have the ability because salvation is individual this morning. Uh, uh, we have the ability to make a decision right now whom we are going to serve. You know what, when Joshua called that decision to be made uh, amongst the children of Israel right there, uh, uh, you know what, it was a given point in time to where they had to de decide right then and there. You know what? It, it was straightforward talked about. Uh, well, they, they could go out and they could follow uh, all those others that had been followed before or they could choose this day just as he made the choice and made no doubt about it when he said it. He said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's what you've got to say within your own individual self right there this morning, right now. At this given point in time, stop making excuses uh, for the sin that's going on in your life. Stop making excuses of why you're not going to church. Stop making excuses of, of why, of why uh, uh, this is taking place in your life. What kind of circumstances you've got going on. You know what I've seen? People use it everywhere. And I, I'm going to tell you, I, I've done it myself. I, I'm not even sure. Like I said, you've got to preach to yourself or you preach to anybody else. You know what? We make too many of those excuses. But you know what? God doesn't accept any of them. He doesn't take any of them to be. You know, he's not a God of excuses. He doesn't have to explain why he didn't do something because everything he said, he did. Uh, you know what? I, I, I like to think a lot of times, and I've used this scripture quite a lot, but over in uh, Ezekiel, the 18th chapter, uh, uh, you know what? What did the children of Israel do? They, they went in and they tried to make an excuse of why they were in the situation they were in. Why things were taking place. Why, uh, you know what, uh, all this uh, uh, trouble uh, and trial were going throughout their life. And uh, they, you know what, they, they said that they had it because their, their fathers had eaten sour grapes. Uh, you know what, I'm going to tell you, that, that, that uh, statement right there uh, sounds funny for us today, but uh, simply what it is to God, what God heard that day, is that they would use an old parable as an excuse. Something it was not intended on being. And you know what, God? Being a God that's not a God of excuses, he, you, he let them know straightforward, just like he lets us know in the word of God. You know what, if you've got question about anything, you know what, I believe a man been saved by the grace of God uh, through the blood of Jesus Christ, I believe today that he's got that spirit dwelling within him. And a lot of times, if you have to question something, whether something's sin or not, uh, most time it is. Uh, you know, just my personal experience, and I believe that we could probably back that up through some testimonies. Uh, but uh, at the same time, I'm sitting here thinking about this is a lot of things that are going on right now, a lot of things that we're seeing and that have been here for a very long time, you can back it up in the Word of God. You can go to the Word of God and see what it says. It's not dependent upon your interpretation of the Word of God. It's dependent upon the interpretation of the Holy Spirit. If it's right there, black and white, and it stands against the law of God, it is sin. You know what? And, and, and for you to go and say, well, uh, uh, for all of sin to come short of the glory of God... Uh, for, I, I'm, I'm a sinner. I'm going to sin. I, that's just uh, that's just a part of me. That's that's my human side. That's the things that's just going to happen. You know what is ignorance? Because what it tells us by letting us know that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God, it tells us there is a way to escape. There is a way to get out. There is a way uh, that needs to be done in order to get out of the way of the wrath of God that is coming upon that sin in your life. It doesn't matter. That if you've been talking about in that scripture right there, because I believe that my name is written upon that scripture. But it, it, what matters today is if I've been forgiven of it or not. I, 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 I've done my fair share of sin and, and some plenty enough for other people. 
But at the same time, we've got to know that we serve a God that is a God of forgiveness uh, uh, by his son Jesus today, by what he did, by uh, him, him uh, uh, making that ultimate sacrifice for a world that did not deserve him. You know what? That, that's what we begin to see right now is, you know what? We get down to the point right here. We, we feel undeserving a lot of times. But God, through his son Jesus Christ, by that blood being applied, has made us worthy. That we walk in a way according to uh, that he has set forth. What be ye holy for I am holy. I say it all the time because I believe that is a scripture that is so overlooked today by God's people. It's not by the world. The world is not that scripture right there that we hear uh, and we hear quoted time and time again. That is not something the world's going to understand. But God's people should understand what that is saying. There is a way of holiness that a man has got to live after. If you're a child of God today, if you've been born again, if salvation is a part of your life and uh, uh, you've you got that time and that place, you are to know that there is a way of holiness that was instilled within you. And it is by that Holy Spirit that is a very timid thing that will only walk in the ways of holiness. It does not make mistakes. It's of God. God is a perfect God. He is a righteous God. Everything that He does and everything that is of Him is done by that way. You and I, hey, we like to say all the time, hey, well, I'm not perfect. Well, you, if you're looking for me to be perfect, I'm not going to be perfect. And I, and I dare say that you back that up with yourself, that we know we're not perfect, but we have the ability to be perfect, though. You know, that, and I like to say, well, uh, you, that, that, that's not a true statement. How, how is it not? If you're a born-again child of God, and I, and I know that I'm repeating the same scriptures I use all the time, but the Word of God is the Word of God. It does not change, and it still holds true today no matter how many times it's said. A man that would walk in the Spirit the same as a perfect man. It inspired John to write that down, and, uh, and by that scripture today, you and I know that we've got to live in a, in a likeness of God that is placed within our lives. You and I, that first creation that we are, that mankind, sure, that flesh that we have is a sinful flesh. It's a vile and it's wretched. That creature that I was, uh, uh, you know what? It was something that it took hold of me. And uh, uh, you know what? I let it take hold of me. And you know what? If I'm giving it any time, it'll take hold of me again. But right now, I know that I've been saved by his marvelous grace, uh, that old man's dead, that I've been raised up a new man, and, uh, and that I'm to live in that likeness, uh, uh, one that is after the craftsmanship of God, uh, uh, not anything of myself, uh, uh, lest I should boast about it, as the scripture tells me, uh, uh, but it is his workmanship, it is his craftsmanship, it is what he's instilled. If a man knows that today, if you know that you've been saved, and I encourage you right now, you ask yourself that question. If you don't think that everything's right between you and God, if you don't think that everything's going so well and you ain't as close as you need to be, ask yourself this question first. How do I know I'm saved? You know, because I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm not here to tell anybody they're, they're, whether they're saved or not, but what I am here to tell you is what the Word of God says. If, it, if it's a, you, I believe if you're saved, it's a no-so salvation. You're going to know that you're saved. And if you are saved, then therefore there's no excuse. There's no excuse for a man to be, once he has been born again, Saved by the grace of God through the blood of Jesus Christ, there is no reason, there is no excuse good enough to, to explain why we are trying to make sin all right. There is no excuse for any church. No, there's no excuse for any year. There's no excuse uh, uh, for any situation. The Word of God lays it out right there knowing what we were knowing what we've become by salvation in Jesus Christ and what we now claim to be. So what we're claiming to be right now is ones that, as the Word of God puts it, and lets it known very straightforward, is that we're the ones that are walking in the holy light manner, that are to walk worthy of our calling. You know what I'm going to tell you? If, if God made us worthy through the blood of the Lamb, then today we are to walk worthy. So if we're walking worthy today, and we're doing things according to the Word of God, uh, then the word, we'll know the Word of God is straightforward, and there's no room for excuses to make of why we're doing the things that we're doing, why we're accepting the things we're accepting. Uh, while, we're, while we're going out and uh, giving all our time to this world and not giving any of it to God. You know what? Uh, I made the statement once again last week about time. You know, I've been reading a lot about time. You know what I think? We all, we all probably do ourselves a big favor by reading and, and, and keeping ourselves updated on what time is re really is. It's a borrowed thing that we've got from God. But just for a little while is what we got. We got to do our best with it. We got to make sure that we're living up to uh, what we said we would. You know what? We made a vow with God. If you've been saved today, if you made whenever you were on bending knees wherever it was, on whatever altar that you made it on, you made a vow to God. 
that you would be willing and obedient and trustworthy in Him. But I'm going to tell you, I, I, I was uh, uh, thinking about these, uh, these statements that were made earlier about the children of Israel over in the book of Ezekiel. And they, they told God, and uh, you know, they had all these things by, by the, because their fathers had ate sour grapes, because they had transgressed, because they had got out and done the things of the world. They had followed after strange gods. Well, God had said, that's not so. You know, whatever man will have to answer for exactly what he's done, not for what his father's done. Every, let every father answer for what he's done. Let every son answer for what he's done. And you know what? I'm not going to have to pay for any other sin of the world. Uh, you know what? Jesus, uh, I believe he done that. He done that at that one point in time. He paid for a sin that he never even committed. He became all sin on that cross. And you know what? And I know by that way right there, that made salvation individual for me. That made it where it come into my heart. And uh, you know what? He didn't die on the cross just for me, but I believe he would have died on that cross just for me. You know what? And I believe that salvation is that personal. And therefore, if I know it's that personal, then I know that I'm not going to have to pay uh, for any other sin that is committed outside of what I do myself. But I do know by what the Word of God says, though. It says for all. You know what? All is inclusive. It's inclusive to everyone in this in this world. And uh, we like to point it out whenever it, uh, uh, when it when it comes to talking about Scripture, such as John three sixteen, things like that. The good the good side of things. And uh, uh, but you know what? Uh, uh, we got to realize what it took to get there. It says, for all have sinned. A man's got to realize that he's lost. He's got to realize that he is a sinner before he can be saved. He, you know what Jesus said? He, he, came, he came to seek and save that which was lost. You know what? He, and uh, what, why was he around sinners? Because sinners is where, is where the, the gospel's got to be preached. It's got to be talked about, but it's got to be, talk, it's got to be preached and talked about by a people that know what it's like, that, that have been in that situation and that have experienced salvation. The Holy Spirit is, is living within them. And it goes out, when it goes out, it goes in it's such a power. Uh, that I, 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 we can try to explain it with words all we want to, uh, but you know what? That power can only be explained by an awesome power. And you know what? Whenever it does, I believe that a man that has truly been born again, uh, that is living a life that is pleasing unto God, I believe it can be realized not only by the church. You know what? I, I, I know a lot of good God-fearing men that I respect uh, uh, a great deal because of how they live their lives. I believe they're the same men uh, in the church house as they are outside in the world. And I, you know what, I had a good, good, a good life to experience all those things. But you know, at the same time, I believe those same men can go out in the world and, I, and, and live their lives in front of people maybe uh, of, of a lost sinner that's never been saved. And you know what, and I believe that sinner can recognize uh, what kind of life he lives. You know what, I believe the granddaddy used to always use a church and uh, you know what, any, any of the members on here today, I know what scripture I'm trying to get to because I use it all the time because I, I believe it was influential to me. Uh, you know what, is whenever somebody says something about you, make sure it's false. That's what it tells us over in the, over in the New Testament there. It lets us know very straightforward, hey, hey you know what, a, a, a lie can't stand against the truth. You know what, if you're living a life of truth, a life of holiness, a life that's after the will of God, then whenever you stand before men, it's going to be shown before men. What did he do for Job? Job experienced the, uh, probably the worst uh, period of time, of lifetime that any man I believe has ever experienced. He had everything taken away from him, everything uh, just, uh, just wiped out. After having all, it uh, just seemed like everything that a man ever needed, it was all taken away from him. And uh, you know what? There could be debate on how that was done. We know Satan was involved. We know that God uh, was there. Uh, and we know what kind of man Job was, that he was a righteous man, that he withstood. And in the end, what did God do? He magnified him. He magnified him spiritually, I believe, before Satan to let Satan know, hey, you can't touch what's mine. You can't touch what, uh, what I'm in a part of. But he also let the world know. He, he showed man because he had more than he ever had before. You know what, and I, like I say, it's not all about riches. And I, I don't believe today that if you enter in uh, to any bit of, of a walk with the Lord thinking that you're going to get rich, uh, you know what, I'm going to tell you right now, most of the time you're going you're gonna to see that uh, you're going to be highly disappointed on that. But you know what, what the Lord can give you though. You know what, he can allow the world to see through you. You know what, you can't place a price tag on that. You can't place a price tag on a man that is a man of integrity, a man, a man, a man that, uh, that lives a life of truth, one that can stand and be magnified of God. Uh, you know what? And it may be in, in uh, 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 things that the world sees, uh, such as possessions. But I'm going to tell you what, I believe a man that lives in that way, there is a respect that comes worldwide. And no matter what kind of condition it is, because I don't believe conditions is ever a, a situation, like I said, hey, you can't blame con conditions you, for your. You can't give an excuse for the conditions you're going through in life right now for why your sin is, is still there. God has made a way. He made it so simple. He made it. He made it so accessible for us today 
that we could go anytime, anywhere. You know what? And I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, that drawing power of the Holy Spirit, I believe, has got to be there. I believe that convictions make us who we are. You and I, as born-again children of God, uh, uh, you know what? I had a man ask me one time. He said, do you believe that we're convicted after we're saved? I, I, and I believe with all my heart. The scriptures tell us that a man is made out of his convictions after he's saved. You know what? what there are things that, that are going on, and, I, and I, I believe that's how the Holy Spirit lets me know whenever uh, uh, something's right or wrong or not. Uh, it's by the convictions. You know what? Some things to me might be uh, different. Uh, you know what? They, 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 they may not strike you the same way. But if I live by my convictions, if I make sure that whenever the Holy Spirit tells me to refrain from, to stay away from, you know what? Uh, you know what we talk about conditions in life and how how they're so they're, they're so volatile. They're, you know what? You and I might, you may, may be facing different things, but at the same time, knowing that we serve the same God, the one that, that uh, has been able to be set there as that staple point that we can go back to, no matter what we're going through, no matter what time in life it is, if we would just turn to. Him, you know, he would always be there in the very situation that need be, that he could be able to be uh, uh, the one that you need to make it by and to get rid of that uh, that trouble and trial in your life. And uh, you know what, to a, uh, to a born-again child of God, I believe that trouble and trial is sin. So you know what, I'm going to tell you, uh, uh, you know, all these other things, If you, according to the Word of God, uh, uh, you know, they could do whatever they want to to me in, in this world. Uh, a man could try to do all he wants to, take everything away from me. But uh, you know what? Uh, he can't take that joy that the Lord gave me whenever he entered into my heart that night. Uh, uh, you know what? So that right there uh, lets me eliminate every excuse that could be given to why I'm uh, allowing things to go on that should not be going on. So uh, you know what? I'm going to tell you this morning, uh, that scripture right there might be simple. It might, it might be the only one that, that we have laid on our heart, but I, I think it tells the world. It can, it can tell you and I, tell the church, let us know right now uh, uh, the, the conditions that are going on, the things that are happening, uh, you know, the excuses that we want to try to make. And I'm going to tell you, by knowing that scripture right there, it says that for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, it lets me know that I'm already in the situation to where I want to make those excuses up. I'm already, by nature, I have it within me that I, where I want to eliminate all fault of myself. But you know what? That's why God gave us the word, and thank God for it. He gave us this word right here to where it could be preached it can go out in, into a lost and dying world. People that are in that very same condition that want to make an excuse for everything he wanted to eliminate. Everything. And I, you know what? I, I love the scripture over in the third chapter of the book of Galatians. Uh, you know what it, it, it tells us about the 21st to the 27th verse. Go and read that right there. It lets us know that God, by his word, by, by the, his law from the very beginning of time, cut off all paths. Any way we wanted to try to get out, any way we wanted, any kind of route we wanted to try to take to get around the blame, God cut off all ways. Not that he wanted to put us down, not that he wanted us to remind us of, of how wretched we were, but he cut off all ways that we might find the only way, the true way, the only door that was placed there, the way, the truth, and the life, his son, Jesus Christ. So if he done that today, if he, if he placed that within our life, hey, hey God, his ways are far above my ways. I don't understand a lot of times, and I, I want to try to make it easier on myself a lot of times. We know the easy way is not always the best way. It's not always the right way. But God has placed it easy enough within our life or right, uh, that we can realize, hey, we can go down the, continue going down the path of making excuses to where it never really goes away. You know what? If you make an excuse for something, it doesn't get rid of it. Uh, it, just, it just postpones it. It puts it off for a little while. You know what? It's still there. I mean, I, I, I think it never really takes care of anything. But you know what? To think about that same sin that, that you're, you're trying to excuse in your life right now. You know, it, it may put it out of your mind for just a little bit, but it's going to come back. The conviction is still going to fall there. It's still going to be there. But wouldn't it be so have, taking that same sin and going to the Lord and asking for forgiveness, asking and, and repenting for the things you've done, being truthfully sorry to have that taken away from you, to be put under the blood, and you know how God is about it. What is he saying in scripture? He said that I've cast as far as he's from what is from the West. And to remember it no more. Hey, I'm going to tell you, he's a forgetful God. He has the ability to forget. So therefore, hey, taking all that away, peace and joy and comfort will outweigh a little bit of time of postponement to me each and every day. That's why I chose to accept Jesus Christ, my personal savior. I, I was tired of running. I was tired of, you know what, how many times in my life that I've probably said that? You know, I, I, there, there was a time whenever I was called to preach. Uh, you know what? I was young when I was called to preach, 16-year-old. 
And, uh, you know, I, I didn't understand because I, I can't hardly say a mouthful. I, I'll start stuttering and everything else. I'm shy. Uh, getting in front of this camera is all I can do. And you know what? Hey, I, I ran from it. I, I took all most people that know me know about this. But, you know, uh, about a year, the worst year of my life, trying to run away, trying to put that, conv that conviction of not doing what the Lord had laid and, and right before my path to do. Uh, you know what? I tried to put it off for a little while, but it always kept coming back. But I remember those words I said to my granddaddy that night when I came up to him. I said, I'm tired of running. You know what? There's going to be eventually, and I'm praying for this. I, I believe there's eventually going to be a time to where you're tired of running. You're tired of making up excuses. You're tired of put, placing this scripture right here as that excuse in your life. Well, I'm a sinner. You know what? It, it just comes out of me. It's just a part of me. Stop using that because if you're a born again child of God, and even if you want to be, today I believe can be your day. I believe this, uh, the Holy Spirit's drawing you to that point. Now, maybe it can be. But I believe that if you get down to that point to where you realize that, hey, that's, that's the opportunity for you. That you go and you take it right now. Stop living a life and say, well, hey, I'm just, I'm just an old sinner. I'm not perfect. I know God knows you're not perfect. But you know what? He has a way planned up for you to be. He, ha he has one that from the very beginning of time, something that he's laid out, and he has tried through his word to get out to all ends of the land. And I believe that it will be accomplished. I believe that it will go out unto all nations. We hear reports all the time about how every nation now has heard the word of God. Well, you know what? I believe that there's going to come a point in time to where there won't be one undone. There won't be one that has not heard. And you know what? When he does that, he does his very best to make sure that you know that there's a way that's better than you making excuses for everything going on right now. If we would choose to live a life that is holy and acceptable unto him, we wouldn't have to worry about these things. And things would be accomplished in a better way. You know what? I want to see things happen that, that used to happen. I, you know what? We long for that all the time. And I, but you know what? Most of all, I want to see the things, what, what God's got in store. You know what? What he's got in store for us today, I believe, is far better than what we're seeing right now. You know what? And I want to be a part of that. So the only way I can do that is stop making excuses right now and start living for it. So as we go to the Lord in prayer, and we'll, we'll begin to end out this uh, uh, this message right here. Uh, uh, we encourage you once again to reach out to somebody. Hey, I'm going to tell you that right now, I, I think is a time that we can uh, uh, begin to acknowledge this. It's time to reach out and to begin to maybe just, if you, I don't know if it's got to be a checking on somebody, if it's just got to be a, to tell somebody that you love them, uh, you know, you're thinking about them, you're praying about them. It's time for us to reach out and to begin to uh, inspire someone. And I, I think the very first thing that you and I can do by starting that process to make sure that we send out the love of God to somebody is making sure that we're exactly where we need to be. We're exactly in the position that God wants us to be. And when we're in that position right there, I believe the possibilities are limitless for us today. So we're going to go to the Lord in prayer, and after that, we'll close out. Dear Lord, we'd like to thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you've given us, dear Lord. We thank you for the scripture today and uh, how it's, uh, how it's uh, uh, begin to instill within our hearts, dear Lord, and that we can apply it right now and uh and as we go out into this world, dear Lord, we know that, uh, uh, that, that there's people in the conditions that we once were. And uh, uh, we thank you today for the salvation that brought us out of that. And uh, uh, we thank you today for each and everything that you do for us and uh, allowing us to get to the point to maybe where we can uh, uh, receive those spiritual blessings in a mighty way this morning, dear Lord. And we and we thank you for that. And uh, uh, we thank you for the church that you've been able to give us, dear Lord, to be, come and uh, uh, be a part of. And uh, uh, that we can all come together in, in uh, brotherly love and uh, uh, to begin to experience uh, uh, your marvelous grace in such a mighty way by coming in one mind and one accord. And we thank you uh, for that unity we have in the Holy Spirit. And uh, uh, we just pray this morning, dear Lord, maybe someone uh, I'll be able to see the same thing. That uh, uh, though sometimes we feel unworthy, dear Lord, we know that the world's out there today and uh, uh, dabbling in things that uh, uh, that you don't see fit, dear Lord. And uh, and with that we 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 have uh, uh, sustained uh, ourselves away from and uh, uh, by that constraint of the Holy Spirit that you've given us, dear Lord, and uh, uh, by us being in a, a position uh, uh, to where we've been sanctified uh, by uh, by your marvelous uh, uh, saving grace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We thank you this morning for that, and uh, uh, that we be able to show a world that they can have the same thing no matter what they've done. Regardless of what the past is, dear Lord, you're able to look beyond every one of our faults. We thank that this morning, this, dear Lord, that you've got it in your scripture uh, to let us know what that pathway is. And we thank you uh, uh, for no excuses to be made uh, for anything that you've done, everything you said you're going to do. Help us to be the same way, dear Lord, that we be holy uh, just as you are. And we pray this morning uh, that each and every one of them receive, uh, uh, that's been on here and heard the word, uh, a, a special blessing out of it. Maybe they can be a blessing to someone else. And let it go forward uh, the way that you'd have it go. Uh, I reach out in all the land. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. We'll go ahead and we'll close out with this. God bless you. And we love you this morning. Just continue to remember each and every one that's been made mention of. God bless you.